because I think everyone tries to aspire to be in front of the camera, but there's only a certain number of slots in front of the camera. But (laughs) there's a whole lot more money a lot of times behind the camera. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like the executives, like, you know, the guys who are running these studios, they don't, you don't even know what they look like. Right. You know, they could be right there in the room with you and they're worth two, three hundred million dollars. Exactly. You know, they're writing the checks to the people in front of the camera. Exactly. You know, and that's why, like, like I said, I'm so thankful for my friend Jaquavis Coleman because anybody who knows his background, right? Like he's a writer and nobody self-publishes like him. Like he he goes hard with the self-publishing. But when he introduced me to this world of being able to invest in myself and what that comeback was like. I was like, oh man, <laughs> what? Like, don't get me wrong. I would, I would be in a studio movie any day. Like, you know, I have no, nothing against them, but am I going to wait on that? No. Cause it's not what's going to make me rich for real. That's not what's going to make me wealthy. I could maybe get rich doing films for other people, but owning my own films is what's going to make me wealthy. That's going to have money in my my grandchildren's pockets, you know, leave yep. something for my great-grandchildren. Like, and it's going to come from this, you know? So, yeah, man, hopefully, you know, the the things that I went through and the struggles that I've overcome, people can actually look at and say, I learned something from that. Not only did I learn something from that, I actually got an opportunity from that same guy, you know, because that, that's what's going to change everything, the opportunities that we give ourselves because we keep watching everybody running around in a circle and it's so scary that you're like, as much as I want to help, I got to get out of there, you know? I just I can't be in that environment, you know? So hopefully this this starts to break the chain of, of the foolishness that we constantly experience. And, well, yeah. I mean, I remember my first film project. It was called Ghost Ride the Whip. It was a documentary about the Bay Area and the okay. hyphy movement. This was in 2008. Uh, I directed it and, and produced it. You know, it came out through Image Entertainment. It, you know, it was on MTV and I think it was on Netflix for a while and everything else like that. I remember getting a $30,000 check up front and I never saw another penny for the rest of my life. <laughs> this came out like 15 years ago. Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I remember right around that same time, that's when I decided to launch Vlad TV. And the understanding was, okay, I'm not going to get any upfront checks for this, but I'm going to own everything. Right. And I'm going to be able to monetize it forever. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And 15 years later, that was by far, by far the best decision that I could have made. Cause I could have stayed in the Hollywood circle and okay, let me go get another documentary deal. Let me get a, uh, a scripted, you know, uh, movie deal or whatever else. But I'm like, a lot of times, man, this paperwork is funny on the back end. They're always claiming they haven't recouped and, you know, there's no way to really audit them. So I'm like, you know, fuck all this. I'm just going to own everything exactly. and I'll make a lot less money up front. I'm going to finance everything myself, but I'm going to have a catalog over time that's going to be very valuable, which is what the movie studios have been doing the whole time. Exactly. They've been just building up their massive catalogs that they own outright, that they could you know, bring back, they own the IP so they could do a reboot, they could do whatever with <laughs> exactly. it, but ultimately they keep all the ownership and yeah, they're putting up the money and they're not getting any checks up front, but the long-term play will always turn out better. And I think that's what you're realizing right now with your new film project and your new companies and everything else like that. And, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. It's, it is what it is. Yeah, because like, to be honest, no matter how it may seem, to anybody else, for people who have some of the biggest careers in Hollywood, it's still hurry up and wait, you know? Mm. At at your best, you're doing like three films a year. At your best, you know? And it's just because time doesn't permit you to do everything. So it would behoove you to go in your bag and figure out something, you know what I mean? What am I going to produce that's going to be mine? Because you're going to take, you know, nine or ten months out of your year making somebody else rich, you know what I mean? And you mm-hmm. might get a six, seven figure check, but I mean, it ain't going to last you for the rest of your life unless you invest that properly. And, you know, it ain't no better place to invest in yourself. Right. And, you know, for example, right now, the whole strike is happening in Hollywood with, with the right. writers and so mm-hmm. forth. And, and I understand their point of view, but the reality is, is that the you know, the financials of the movie industry is not what it was 10, 20 years ago. Exactly. You know, streaming, streaming has changed that. 
and a lot of the film companies are losing money. So you could sit there and complain and demand for higher wages and you could strike and you could band together and you could try to put pressure, but ultimately you're not going to get water from a rock. So (laughs) at some point, like, yo, like we don't have the money right? and we have to figure out ways to cut costs to create these projects where they're going to be profitable. Cause then what's the point of even doing this? Exactly. So, so instead of, you know, picketing and getting angry and, and trying to put pressure on these studios, go and make your own stuff. Yeah. And, and YouTube is free. Exactly. You know what I mean? that's, YouTube that's is, what is, is a hell of a platform. You know, they got so many stories. Like, I'm not going to lie, man. If I see one more reboot, I'm going to fucking shoot myself. <laughs> I swear. I'm so tired of seeing them. You know what I mean? Either that or we're watching like Fast and Furious 25. You know what I mean? And right. it's like, yeah, exactly. yo, you know, like they act like they can't think of no more great ideas. You know, right. and and we no longer have to deal with this whole beast of nobody's going to know I'm promoting my movie. You know what I mean? Like when we did Straight Outta Compton even, bro, like I think Mission Impossible had like 3,800 more screens than us or something, just something crazy. But with, with, with streaming, you don't have to think about all of that stuff no more. Like all you got to think about is hitting the mark. Like let's make it good. Let's make it the best quality that it could be, you know. You might try to see a couple corners that you can cut. You know, let's use my house to shoot. Let's use my car. Let's save some money here and there. And, you know, but that's that's what makes it fun and that's what makes it yours. But at the end of the day, when that check come back and it got your name on it and it belong to you, oh, man, it's a whole different vibe. You know, yeah. it's a whole different vibe. That's what it is. Jason Mitchell, man, I appreciate you coming in. I've been a longtime oh, fan. Uh, like I said before, the interview, I wanted to do this interview when Straight Outta Compton dropped, but you guys were on a crazy run and it was hard <laughs> to reach you and everything else like that. So finally, we got to do this. Uh, Easy e has been such a major influence on my life. Uh, it really, you know, he really kind of shifted my trajectory in my life because the music that he was a part of was so important that I essentially devoted the rest of my life to it. You know, That's and dope, I still man. I still do it every day, and there's still that love. And it's always like the artists that you admire before you ever got into the industry where it was just pure. You know, it was just like, I just love the music. I don't know the guy. I'll, I'll never meet him. Uh, it's all a fantasy to a certain degree, but I, I'm just in love with this music and this culture. And, you know, decades and decades later, this is still what I do every day. And you had such an important role for such a great film portraying him, which was not easy to do. Yeah, you know? man, it, it was, was not, it was not, it was not, it was very hard to pull off and you guys pulled it off so great. And you have so many other dope projects after that. Um, and regardless of all the hurdles that you have to deal with, you had to deal with that, that were thrown your way. You're still standing tall. You're still doing projects. You're, you're shifting into your own companies and uh, man, I love to see it and I can't wait to see what else you got coming up. Man, thank you, my brother. Thank you. We might need you for something too. We're gonna we gonna get you a call. We I got gonna you. Give you a call. I got you. I got you. I, I was I was in the boondocks back in the day. I don't know if you remember that episode, <laughs> yeah. but there's a there's a cartoon version of me in the boondocks, which yeah, was one of my one of my highlights. I you know what I'm saying? It. I could do it. And uh yeah, man, whatever you need, I got you. Until I appreciate next time. You, brother. Peace. Later.